Hi, this is Stacey from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. We have Marnie Bouchamp. She is an entrepreneur. She is a published author, and she wears lots of different hats. She also does coaching, and she has an amazing story to tell. So I'm not going to waste any more of your time. I'm going to give it over to Marnie. She's going to tell you a little about herself, what she does, and you're going to really enjoy what she has to say. So Marnie, take it away. Thank you, Stacey, and thanks so much for having me today. Um, so I uh, basically, I bought my first business in my 20s. I have, I'm onto my fifth business now. So four of those have been startups and three have been acquisitions uh, along the way. So I've um, integrated those into existing businesses. And I, as you said, I'm a published author now. So as of October last year, so very recent, which is super exciting. So my book is an autobiography, essentially, but it's got a bit of a business undertone and talks about, you know, a lot of the challenges, both personally and professionally that I have faced along the way. So a lot of, lot of great content and little tips in there on how that you can over, overcome a bit adversity and things like that in difficult situations. And yeah, these days I am more in um, in that coaching space, coaching, mentoring, you know, business startups and, you know, mindset, growth, all that sort of thing, which is something that I'm really passionate about and I absolutely love doing. Now, what got you into um, this? You know, I know you have a, a, a really, um, you've been through a lot in your life, let's say. You've had a lot of obstacles <laughs> and you've, you, you've gone through a lot and you've overcome a lot. So do you mind telling a little about yourself and, and how you got from one area of your life where you were going through a lot of struggles and how you were able to pull yourself up and then become this outstanding woman that you are today? Sure. Yeah, it's it's been a journey, that's for sure. Um, as I said, I bought my first business in my 20s and I, I basically just fell into that opportunity, which was really exciting. And it's something I'd always wanted to do. My dad, who I was very close to, bought his first business when I was about 12 years old. And I used to spend so much time with him. I kind of grew up a bit of a tomboy in a boy's world I had brothers and a dad who loved adrenaline so you know I was brought up playing lots of sports like water skiing snow skiing you know soccer and basketball and go-kart racing dirt bike riding all that sort of thing so I kind of always had this real strength and I guess in a um, high achiever wanted to do everything that the boys did and that sort of thing keep up with everybody so I, I think I've always had that there and um when I, as I said, when I, when my dad bought this business, I spent most weekends and school holidays going with him and, and just loved being involved and watching that business evolve. Yeah. So by the time I got to high school and people would say to me, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? It was always, I want to have my own business one day. It was right. just, it was just a thing that I've always wanted to do. And obviously didn't know what that would be in, what industry or anything like that. Yeah. So yeah, I just, I think it's one of those things that I'd always, as I said, always um, aspired to. And then the opportunity presented itself a lot sooner than I had expected. But it was something that I knew that I had to take and run with it. So I went in all guns blazing, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much head first, didn't even think about how I was going to manage it. I had, you know, one daughter and another on the way at that stage. Right. And uh, I just knew that it was something that I just, I had to do. So the business was very successful. I took it from about four people when I bought into it to uh, 12 employees. Eventually, that first year, we increased profitability by over 400%. Uh, it, was, it was a journey even just trying to build rapport and respect with the team that were there because they were a lot older than me. And basically, I came into that business initially as a trainee, and then I was the boss within about 12 months. <laughs> So it was a little bit of an adjustment for everybody, including me. Yeah. Um, so, you know, learning, learning from the ground up, really, it was what I had to do. I had no business experience, but for me, it was just about creating connection and building respect with a team, not just expecting it. Right. Um, unfortunately, after about three or four years, maybe four years, I think it was, I ended up going through a separation with my husband, who was a father of my two daughters, they were very young. So we, they were three and five at the time. Mm -hmm. So that was quite a difficult 
process and experience. And I decided at that time that I probably need to needed to sell the business, spend a little bit of time with them. So unfortunately for me, in the process of selling that business, the franchise franchise all decided to sue me for damages for a few different reasons. Mm. Um, none, none of which were really my fault, but right. there yeah. were things that I could have changed in hindsight, obviously, looking back, there was de definitely decisions made from the heart as opposed to from the mind, the brain. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that resulted in me essentially being dragged through the Supreme Court for nearly six months and I got to a point where you know I'd lost my house I'd lost obviously all of the proceeds from the sale and literally sitting in the park with my daughters a dollar 76 in my bank account and not even able to buy them an ice cream mm -hmm. so it was it was a really really tough time and then not only did I go through the divorce and then I went through the financial ruin which I didn't actually lose the court case, by the way. <laughs> it just got sent to mediation and we both had to walk away. So it was just all the costs and things that yeah. I had to go to, you know, come up with. Um, and then, yeah, within a month of that, my dad, who had been my business mentor, you know, I was very close to my best friend the whole way through, uh, passed away suddenly. So no warning, he was only 58. Oh, and yeah. so, yeah, it was, it was a... When we talk about challenges, it was yeah. the hardest time of my life. And I, I really, at the time, didn't think I would be able to get through it. But for me, I've always tried to focus on the bigger picture. And obviously having my daughters, who were my sole responsibility, was critical in me getting through that because I knew that I didn't want my daughters to live that life. I didn't want them to have a mum who gave up. And right. so... Somehow over time, it wasn't something that happened overnight, but I just decided one day that I had to get up and I had to do it all again. I knew that because I had done it once and, you know, I'd been successful in it and I, I had that, you know, I had that confidence and that belief in my ability to build another business and to go again. But I, I needed that time and that space to to breathe. And because I literally was in a mountain of debt, yeah. <laughs> I had to just completely just wipe the slate before I could even start again I um I had the opportunity I had put my company into voluntary administration through the court case just mm -hmm. to try to bring that to a head and but my company was named after my daughters and it was something that I was really proud of so I wasn't prepared to let that go I had the opportunity to declare bankruptcy because I really, really didn't have anything but again I didn't want anybody else to be suffering from financial loss either right. so I made the decision that rather than do all that I was going to repay everything I was in hundreds of thousands of debt, dollars of debt by the way so it took me nearly five years to repay right. that I was determined to do it and I knew that that was the way I wanted to do it not to not to just um cancel everything out yeah. so yeah I just I guess I think I just had to you know find something and I I knew that it was up to me you know, ultimately, it doesn't matter what we go through and how many hardships and adversity we face. The only person that can get us through it is ourselves. We can't yeah. rely on other people. We can't rely on anything else besides, you know, our inner strength. And we all have it. And for me, it was the only way that I could do that was to literally go back to basics mm -hmm. and just take it every day as it came one day at a time. You know, some days were really bad. Some days I couldn't even get out of bed. Right. And then other days. I got up and I knew that I had some energy and I knew that I had to leverage on that. So I just broke everything down into one day at a time and I just need to get through today and right. to get through today and to continue, keep moving forward, these are the things that I need to do. So I would set myself little tasks every morning that I knew would start to propel me in the direction that I needed to go. And once, once you start to do that and you sort of do get through each day, that gives you that confidence that you can do it and you know that there's something there that that's going to help you as long as you just keep moving forward. So for me, it's all about momentum. Right. That's mm. amazing. You know, you know, so many people when, when they go through so much chaos, you know, they, they you know, it's like a, a pot of boiling water and you can only take yeah. so much and, you know, and then eventually the flame is going to make the water boil over and most people lose it. Most people don't know what to do. Most people, either they get stuck, they get depressed. Mm -hmm. They feel like they fall in a hole. 
they feel hopeless and yes. you know for those type of people you know and, and it's only natural that you know many people feel like that I think everybody has felt like that at some point in their life you know how do you get out of that hopelessness you know how do you you know because there are a lot of people out there that don't think they're worthy enough to be bet to 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 move forward and, and gain that courage and to and to be and to, to overcome what they're going through some people mm -hmm. feel stuck some people are just they get so angry or they get so depressed and they just they just like like we said they just get stuck for those type of people, what would you say to them? What advice would you give them to get them going, to, to have them walk down that journey and, and go and set their way on that right path so they could overcome the chaos that they're living at the moment? Yeah, so that's an awesome question. There's um There was something that I heard just recently and it actually came from another podcast and it was a, a something that Oprah Winfrey said. Somebody asked her a similar question and said, for people who are stuck at the moment, what advice would you give them? And her response was essentially that if you are stuck, you don't really know what you want. And I was really thinking about that. And I thought, when you break it all down, it's probably true. Yeah. Because if you're stuck, it means that you don't know where you're going or where you really want to be. Yeah. So for me, it's always... So I always focus on the bigger picture for a start. Yeah. Second, I find my purpose. So my purpose was my kids at that mm -hmm. point. Obviously, over the over year over the years, my purpose has become creating a better life for myself and having more balance and all that sort of thing. But you know, at the time, my purpose was my my children, and that's what I just kept focusing on. And and the pain and the suffering and the, that mental anguish that people go through nobody wants to live like that Nobody. so yeah. for me it was actually making a choice because life is about perception mm -hmm. you know you can perceive things in a positive way you can perceive things in a negative way but that's up to us how we perceive things mm -hmm. and after going through a lot of, I mean I had I spent you know a week laying on the floor crying <laughs> so it's not like I wasn't human and yeah. in the same as so many other people but I think the difference was that I knew that I didn't want to live like that right. I didn't want to stay in that position if you really don't want to stay in that mm -hmm. then you have to make the choice to change right because our lives are not going to change if we don't change exactly exactly and that's what it comes down to is is yeah you have to just find something within yourself and you know people who don't believe in themselves and don't believe their self-worth and their you know their value again I've been through all that and and having gone through what I went through you know making that decision to start another business and go again was like completely overwhelming and not having my dad there either <laughs> to yeah. run things by you know it was a very overwhelming thing but you know, when I really laid it all out and I, you know, you can make a list of the pros and cons. And for me, it was like, you know, what have I got to lose? I've already lost everything. Right. So, you know, I, I'm not scared of failure. Some mm -hmm. of my biggest learnings in life have come from the things that didn't work out. Yes. And so I think that, you know, when things don't work out for you, it builds confidence and it builds strength. Yeah. So rather than living in the past and, and most of the time, and I'm not a therapist, obviously, this is just my my take on things. Most of the time when people are going through, you know, extreme anxiety and stuff, it's either coming from living in the past or trying to predict the future. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're actually living in the moment and you're taking every day as it comes step by step and just doing one or two things for yourself for each day, you know, it 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 forces you to focus on something completely different to the bad stuff or you know all the hard stuff right. um and that that's what's always helped me is just to try um to to focus on what i'm doing at the moment and what i need to do to get through that day so that's probably yeah that's probably think, my best advice i i think your your um your advice when you said, you know, that you can't change the past. So you can't really focus on the past and we can't predict the future. And that's those two things so many people do. We can only yeah. live in the moment. We can only live in the now. And yes. 
we can plan for a better future, but we can't expect yeah. everything to go as accordingly, you know, th you know, there's so many currents <laughs> in life, you know, yeah. that may take us on a different road, but we can, we can try to organize things in our, you know, and try to stick with it the best we can. But over time, things will branch out probably, and things will change accordingly. But you you have to really focus on the now. What's going on yes. now? And how can I make myself a better person? How can I, you know, make my life better? You know, because when you wake up and, the, you know, you want to be able to look in the mirror and like the person who you see. You want to be mm -hmm. able to to love yourself and accept yourself. And yes. you know, those are those are things that a lot of people don't do, but it's so important. And I think too, like you mentioned, you know, being able to look in the positive, you know, like in every, ne I always feel like in every negative thing that happens in life, we could always pull out something positive from it, whether it gave us strength, whether it gave us knowledge, whether, you know, it, it did something to enhance our life in some way, somehow you can focus on those things and say, now I'm going to take those characteristics or qualities that I gained and put it towards the now. The, in the moment and make myself a better person for the future. And I, I think, you know, trying to have that mentality too is really helpful when you're going through crisis and trying to rise above the crisis. What do you think? 100%. I, I totally agree with you. I think some of my biggest learnings that I've taken with me and, and you know, run with them through life have come from those hard times. You know, you, you, for me, when I look back now, and it's impossible for people not to look back, even though, you know, we say don't don't focus on the past. And I, I, I agree with you. I think that's the worst thing we can do. But when I do look back, and obviously it's a thing, try to take the positives out of it. So rather than focusing on the pain and the, the feelings and that sort of thing that you had in that moment. Yeah. It's trying to focus on what I got out of it, the fact that I overcame it, the fact that I'm still here and I'm still breathing and, um, you know, there's always another day. Yes. And, you know, we talk about storms and things like that and a storm never lasts forever. It's, right. It always ends and then there's you've got the calm and that, the, in those calm times, that's when you really need to actually take the action that, you know, that you want to start building the life that you want. We've, we've all got the capacity to do anything that we want. I'm a, I'm a true believer in that. You know, I have a lot of people that say to me, I wish I could do what you do. And, you know, I'd never be able to do that. But everybody can. Yes. You've just got to want it. And you've just got to do the hard, do the hard yards. Yeah. So it's all about having a destination and setting goals. But for me, it's, you know, a goal has an end date. For me, it's about standards. It, it's building standards that you're going to then live by. And each time you set a standard, that becomes the norm. And so yeah. then, you, then you go to the next level and that becomes the norm. Um, to me, that's essentially how I, I build things, everything <laughs> in life. And, and I feel like that, that keeps me more stable, more grounded and, and obviously happier because I'm not always, I have goals, but that's kind of like a, an end result sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so I think that's the other thing. People set these really big goals and things for themselves and they're so they seem so insurmountable that it's too hard to actually take any action or any steps towards that. So they just don't do it. Yeah. Um, me, you know, if there are, you know, the goals are always broken down and, and they had to be broken down into daily activities. And and that that's what helped me pull myself out of, of the um the the mud. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I felt like. I think it's like so important to have those short term and long term goals and and yeah. and but, you know, make them feasible. You know, don't you know, you could have yes, those dreams, really. you know, but yeah. really focus on the realistic things that are in front of you and make them short term goals and long term goals to surround it. And then the littlest thing that you could accomplish, just give yourself a pat on the back, maybe reward yourself. Appreciation. Self appreciation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's really, really important as well. And, you know, I liken it to our, our journeys to, you know, a roadmap. So, you know, when you set out on a, on a trip somewhere, you put the destination into the maps or you look at the maps and you know where you want to go, but you don't focus on that. What you're focusing right. on is your when you turn left, when you turn right, you know, what roads you've got to follow. It's the same with with life and with goals. You know, you, yeah. you've got to... You, to follow it's it's not just going to be you're going to jump from here to there in one go right so yeah i think once you understand that and break that down into little 
stages, it's much easier. Much, oh, much I, easier. I agree. I agree totally. Yeah. Now, do you like do you like journaling? Does that ever help you? Um, writing in, in a notebook or creating pictures or anything like that? Yeah, so I, I do have vision boards. It's the screensaver on my phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I um I also I do journal and and I I used to do it years and years ago and then I, I stopped doing it. But it's something that I've gone back to doing now. Um, I I think that for me, you know, introspection has been a, a massive part of me, you know, healing from a lot of the stuff that's happened and becoming, you know, a lot more, I guess, resilient and happier in my older age. And a lot of that has been taking the space to do it because I think yeah. when you're in, completely embroiled in all this stuff and and um, it's really hard to see. The, the bigger picture and see what's happening. So it's really important, especially, you know, as business owners and stuff like that to take the space, you know, go to a retreat every six months or something for a week where there's no phones and there's nothing and, and journal and sit and write things down. Yeah. You get so much clarity and then you get a lot of a clearer picture on what's gotten you to that point, yeah. what you did, what you did wrong, you know, what you need to change. Um, but journaling has been a very important aspect for me, you know, even when I'm, when I am starting to get really overwhelmed or anxious and, and things, you know, may have not gone the way I wanted them to go. I right. think it's really important to write down how you're feeling and your emotions and stuff like that, because, you know, positivity is, is also is a great thing, but it doesn't actually fix anything. It, yeah. It's, it's still got to lean into the emotions and the feelings and work out, you know, what you're feeling, why you're feeling it and, and then write down what, because once you understand, I think, what you're going through and, and what you're feeling, it's much easier to then get out of that and say, okay, well, now I can let that go because right. I've processed it. I know I understand now why I'm like that, why I'm feeling like that. What do I have to do to make myself feel better and to change my journey? Right. Exactly. Yeah, my, yeah. Now, when you went through so much in your life, um, a lot of times people can't let go because they hold resentment and they hold anger towards the <laughs> per per person that caused it or the people that caused it. And, you know, at some point, like I've learned from my own, my own things in life, you, you know, you, you have to learn how to forgive. You don't have to hear the person say, I'm sorry. You don't have to have that person come to you and make amends with you. But at some point I feel for me, I needed to let go and just forgive them. Look at the situation and say, it's not me. You know, it was them, but I understand what happened. I understand the situation and I forgive them. And, mm. and just make, I used to envision a dove on my shoulder and I, I took all that anger, all those emotions, and I just put it on the dove and I let the dove fly away in my head as I closed my Beautiful. eyes and I was <laughs> meditating. And I feel like, you know, it hurt me more, I think emotionally and even physically, because, you know, 70% of our stress or illnesses are caused by stress. It, it yes. took more out of me to hold that anger towards those people but to forgive them, I felt like a brick was kind of released from me. Now, what mm -hmm. did, how did you deal with all the, the the things that happened to you and the people who came into your life and pretty much destroyed your life at one point and you had to rebuild yeah. yourself all over again? You know, how did you let go of all that anger you probably were holding inside the maybe anger or resentment that followed through? Mm. Good question it, it it definitely was there um and you know it, it comes and goes you know all the time everybody gets angry at, at times right but the problem is that we have no control over other people's actions um I think one thing that my dad said to me after the court case that has resonated and stayed with me throughout my life is that you're never going to be able to control what people say or what people think about you or the way people treat you yeah. And it's true. So if we have no control over it, then we have to let it go because we are the ones that are being affected more from it than them. Yeah. Um, Elle Robbins, who I listen to all the time, she has this let them theory, which I absolutely love. And, and you know, basically she's like, you know, if somebody um, doesn't invite you to lunch, you know, the group friend thing, let them, you know, because at the end of the day, that's their decision. We can't, 
we can't force them to you know want us to be involved we can't right. force people to be nice to us we can't force people to you know be kind so we just have to let them be who they're going to yeah. be and we have to choose how we're going to react right. to that situation I think we have control over our feelings our feelings don't control us we control them and that was a big learning that I had uh when I you know, part of my healing <clears throat> process after a lot of stuff, I went to see a spiritualist for a while. And um, and that was one of the things that he said to me, he had this little bowl of, of rocks and he said, these are like your feelings, they're things. Yeah. And it's true. You know, we 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 have to take control of our own lives and um, anxiety, anger, all that stuff, it manifests really badly in our bodies. And, and, you know, I've seen that over the years with some health issues that I've had. So... Um, for me, I, I don't hold anger anymore. I I know that, you know, somebody's angry or somebody makes you angry or somebody does something, you know, horrible, then they're probably going through something themselves. And I just try to think about what they're feeling for them to be acting like that. Yeah. And then I feel, I feel more um, empathy towards yeah. them than anything. And that in itself, I think, is an awesome thing because that, that makes you feel good that you're actually acknowledging, you know, that they're going through something. And it's almost like I feel like sending that good energy through the, the universe to them yes. <laughs> by doing that. So, yeah, it, it's just something we can't control. And so anger doesn't do anything. It literally is a, an emotion that doesn't do anything for us positively, yeah. positivity-wise. It just destroys all. us. It, it like just like the condition diabetes, it just will slowly destroy you if you let it. So it will. Yeah. You have to let it go. Yeah, definitely. You have to let it go. And and you know, you can't be, you know, running through life being happy and successful and and you know, all that sort of stuff if you're holding anger, if you're angry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work. That, that energy just like draw up, you know, drips out of you. Yeah. So you don't want that because that then changes your relationships with everybody around you. And it's, it's, it's just toxic basically. Yeah. And you could yeah. see when someone is holding anger or just by mm -hmm. the, their facial expressions, their body language, just their tone of voice, you know, when they speak, you know, you can tell when someone has a lot of anger for whatever reason and they're holding it inside and, yeah. uh, you know, I, that was one of the things I did also. And I found it very beneficial. Like you did when people acted a certain way, or they did certain things. I had to stop myself and really look at my, look at their behaviors or what they did or said through their shoes. Why did they do that? Like if I was living in their life and I did X, Y, and Z, and then I had to, I kind of just put myself in their life for a second and try to understand. And then I, I kind of got it, you know, not that I just, I'm justifying it, but like you said, I felt empathy for them, if anything else. Yes. And, and that helped me in the, in the healing process. Yeah. Too. yeah, it does. It really does. Yeah. It's incredible. Actually. I think empathy is one of the biggest, um, you know, things that we can, we can have. Yeah. It's a powerful, it's, it's like an energy, you know, when you're empathetic, it's, it's, yeah, I think it's amazing not anger. <laughs> yeah, no. And it shines through when you're, when you have that, you know, positive energy and when you, when you mm -hmm. have that um, empathy and, and you see things through a different light, people see it also, you know, because yes. you bring that positive energy with you wherever you go. And that's right. there's definitely a difference. There is. Yeah. People, I think people like that almost glow, you know, you can tell when you walk into a room, the people that are full of, you know, joy and happiness and empathy and whatever. Yeah. That's, um, you know, that they're the type of people that, you know, I try to surround myself with now because they're the people that I get drawn to anyway. Yeah. So interestingly, it's, you know, there's, there's obviously others in my life, but you just try to manage that and avoid as much as you can the being caught up in it. That's all. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Now, what made you motivated you to launch your new book? What what gave you the inspiration to want to write this book? Um, so I have always loved writing. I wanted to be a journalist, but fell into other industries. Mm -hmm. I have had a goal since I was in high school. One was obviously the business owner and two was to write a book. And over the years, a lot of the stuff that's in there, I I I, I'm one of those people that does keep everything inside. I'm learning to share and, you know, ask for help when I need it. But I've always kind of bottled things up. And so yeah. there's only been a handful of people who really knew 
what I was going through, right. you know, my years of business and and that sort of thing. So uh, people, those people mostly, but other a lot of others have said to me all the time, you know, you need to write a book. And I always say, yeah, yes, I will one day. <laughs> um, and then for some reason last year, at the beginning of the year, I it just I just decided that it was time. Uh, I, I needed to, I needed to do that. One, I think it was very cathartic. Uh, two, because I'm in that coaching mentoring space now, I needed people to see that, you know, there was credibility there with me. I, I've yeah. been through what most people go through and probably more. Right. <laughs> so I, I just knew that it was a book and a story that I wanted to share. And the publisher that I was dealing with, she was the one also that encouraged me to write that book first because I was working on another book. Mm -hmm. And I will continue and get that book out eventually. But she was the one that once we started to talk, she said, that's the book that you need to write first in that order. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really blessed and really happy that I was able to do that and, you know, take the time last year out of work and, and be able to just sit and focus on that. And, you know, the, the feedback has been amazing and people are really resonating with the, the inspiration and encouragement and knowing that life doesn't have to be smooth sailing for you to achieve anything. You, we all face adversity. Right. And, you know, it's still possible to create an amazing life regardless of what life throws at you. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, like you said before, and like we were talking earlier, you know, if you pull something positive out of everything negative, and if you surround yourself by positivity, your life will enhance, your life will elevate. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I think too, like when you do have that positive attitude and you keep the negative energies away and, you know, cause sometimes we do have friends that might have a great heart, but they're very negative. And yes. those are the type of people that after you talk to them, you feel like a vacuum just sucked all the energy out of you, you know, <laughs> because they, they literally, their energy, they negative energy just sucks positivity. And, uh, yeah. You know, I learned how to distance myself from those people, even though I, I like them, I had to distance myself because they were actually pulling me down, not even realizing it. And then I just surrounded myself by positive outgoing people. And then I started to see changes in my life and I started to see myself build up and get stronger and, and move forward when I did that. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a big difference. There's no doubt. Um, and for me, I, I for years there, I, I seem to keep attracting those people, those mm -hmm. the you know negative people or the victims or you know people that just could never see uh, the the good things I guess that were happening in their lives. And I'm not really sure. I, I don't think I was going through that at the time, but I think I was you know emitting that energy where I was somebody that could help them. I was somebody that could probably give right. them something you know out of my my energy so I I did uh yeah I did have to kind of pull myself away from a lot of those people though because whilst I was helping them and you know helping them to get into a better mindset and space and overcome a lot of that stuff which is what I love to do yeah when you close to people that are just draining you every day and it's never it's all take 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 it's never give you know sometimes you do have to sort of pull yourself away a little bit because you know when there's that imbalance there it's not it's not really healthy for either of you because exactly. they don't they become reliant on you anyway for their happiness and that's not healthy for them so right. yeah I think sometimes by distancing yourself from people like that it's it's good for us but it's also good for them it yes. forces them to find their own yeah their own way yeah. right. happiness in your own way yeah yeah absolutely I agree now is your book now in the in the stores can people get your book right now yeah so it's available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble oh nice it's being distributed through bookstores within the next four to six weeks I think okay. we're working on that at the moment so that's pretty exciting because that'll be a global distribution yeah. and I'm in the process of uploading to um, audiobooks so all the different platforms just going through that process getting yeah getting it all approved and everything so it's all been produced it's just a matter of getting it online so that hopefully should be within the next week as well oh very exciting now tell yeah. me the title of your book so they know yes so it's unread pages the silent struggles behind every success I love it I like that yeah. title a lot yeah 
Congratulations. Yeah, I felt like it, it summed up <laughs> summed up the, the journey pretty well. Yes. So yes. yeah. Hard Definitely. to write the title of a book. What? It's actually hard to find a title of a book, I think. It is. It took me a while. Yeah. It is. It's very hard to to figure out the perfect title. And because the, the title is so important because it, it really gives a person an idea of exactly the whole, you know, synopsis of the book. So you're in, right. in a few words, you have to try to figure out something that really explains the, you know, a really gives the person a really good idea what this entire book is about, you know? Yeah. So yeah, well, it's it, an epitome of what's in there. So it, yeah, it was, it was a little bit challenging, but anyway. I think it's the perfect title. I actually really like it. I'd love it. So I, I like it also. I think that's an amazing title. I think that's an amazing yeah. title. And I wanted to ask you one question. When you talked about your father and, and how he passed, grieving is, is such a hard thing for people. And mm -hmm. that could break a person down, you know, by itself. Um, yeah. Do you have any any suggestions for people who are going through grieving and it's so hard for them to move forward because they miss the person they love? Was there certain things that you did or there certain things that helped you? You know, because we never get over the people we lo we 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 lose, but we learn yeah. how to cope with it. And yeah. what did you do so you were able to cope with it and move forward? Yeah, so there was there was a quite a lot of things. I, I mean, I tried everything to, you know, because I because I'd come from that space where I didn't have the the opportunity to just stay at home and spend time out grieving because of the situation with the court case and not being able to buy groceries. Yeah. So I had to get back to work and and essentially my industry is in real estate. So trying to be upbeat and sitting in front of people talking to them about selling their homes without mm. bursting tears yeah. was impossible for me initially yeah. so I I tried everything so I did do some grief counseling I started writing so I used to write poetry and mm -hmm. I still have a lot of that and the poetry was basically to my dad so oh, I'd write him letters essentially and um I you know I haven't looked at them for years because I still find it really emotional when I do that but yeah. I I do know that they're there and I do have them. And I uh, the other thing I did was I made sure that I, I kept exercising. So just being outside, being in nature, you know, going for walks, all that kind of stuff, it made me feel like I was a little bit closer to him for some reason. I think just being, you know, outside and, and doing something for me. Yeah. Um, I... I used to go and sit, you know, and I still do go and sit where they're placed in the cemetery and, and just, and talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> I usually do it where there's no people around, but even talk to him, him in my head. I think that's a really important thing is that, to, you know, just to acknowledge because one of the hardest things with grief is learning to live without that person in your life because they've been such a big part of your habitual routines. You know, I yeah. spoke to my dad two, three, four times a day. So breaking that cycle of speaking to him was something that I just I just couldn't do. So I, I still spoke to him. I still found ways that I would just sit and have time and say, right, I'm just going to sit and I'm going to call dad in my head. So I found that that helped. Yeah. Uh, besides that, it's it's just it's just a process and and you have to sort of, I think a lot of people focus on the fact that they're not there at everything the year of firsts is the toughest for sure I, I remember the first Christmas you know I couldn't even eat my Christmas dinner because it was just tears it was just soaking in tears so yeah. you know it was hard but I think for me it was adjusting to creating instead of living the life without him yeah. I created a life that that he wasn't a part of I don't know if that makes sense no it but does. rather than expecting him to be at everything I thought okay We've got Christmas this year. My dad's not here, but my mum is and the rest of my family. And we're all grieving together and we're all missing him. So we're going to do something special for dad. So we would put a little bulb on the Christmas tree, you know, for my dad. Or, yeah. you know, we would every Christmas we would always say, you know, and so I get a bit emotional. So here's to dad, you know, because he's on here. So it's been, he yeah. passed away in 2005. And as you can see, I still get emotional about it when I talk about him. But um, yeah, it, it it absolutely gets easier, and it, it really is about just finding ways to still honor them, still to be connected to them, yeah, um, to do special things for them. But really remember the good memories as well, because 
you know, I, I'm a believer in no matter how long we have someone special for, we're very lucky that we had someone special yeah. in our life. Oh, a hundred percent. that we can meet. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's an excellent, excellent answer. I think that will help a lot of people, you know, because that's, you know, so many people, they grieve and, and it's so hard to get, you know, past the grieving process and start trying to live life again, you know, so yeah. 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 So I think that's great advice. Yeah. Now, what type of services do you provide on your on your website? Like now you said you're you're an entrepreneur, so you have your businesses, but you also said you do coaching as well. Yes. So I do coaching. Um, I do business startup coaching, you know, business growth. So mindset for growth and also structure and and that sort of thing for recruitment and growth. I I do do some one-to-one coaching still. Uh, I, I This year I'll probably pull back a little bit on that and do more of the group stuff, but I am still available to, you know, for a few more clients if necessary. Um, but yeah, I also in, I'm in the process of doing a lot of online programs for people. So if they don't have the time or don't want to actually you know uh do that one-to-one or or they're in another country for example so obviously i can't fly to do right <laughs> coaching in the US. so these online programs are all, all around leadership and management and they're they're really really good so they're identifying they're more about the the psychology behind leadership and identifying your leadership style and how that translates throughout your communication with your employees uh, through recruitment the type of people you should be looking for or all of that sort of thing oh, so they're a little bit different to normal sort of leadership and management uh courses I guess I yeah that. that's, that's what's always been always worked for me when it comes to recruiting I've had really good longevity with staff and you know my staff have become my best recruiters I like you know, they bring new people into the business because of the how much they enjoy working for me and that sort of thing so yeah, yeah. oh I like yeah. that a lot and, yeah. and if you had to give away maybe a couple of takeaways from today's discussion, is there anything that you would tell the, the listeners from everything that we discussed, the, the main points, the main things they should really focus on? So one of my favorite sayings is the glass, people who think the glass is either half empty or half full, mm-hmm. the glass is refillable. So I think you've just got to remember that no matter where you're at and what you're going through and what you're feeling at the moment, you have the capacity to change that because, right. as I said, it's it's all about making the choice to create a different life or to be happy or to find ways that, you know, you can achieve your goals no matter what they are. Like I don't care how big your goals are. Yeah. You can achieve anything, but you just you have to find a way to get there and you have to start. Yeah. So, you know, for me, it's just little steps. So, you know, I have a lot of people that say, you know, we've always wanted to start a business, but we're a bit scared. We don't know where to start. Right. You know, first thing you should do is just get online and start researching business names, make it right. exciting. That's yeah. exciting. Research them, see whether they're available. And if they are, register it. Right. There's, there's, you've started. You've started creating your new business. Yeah. You know, then you go to creating a domain name. Right. And maybe an email address. You know what I mean? It's just, uh-huh. it's just baby steps. It's just putting yourself in that zone where you have actually taken some kind of steps towards it. And then that creates excitement. That creates momentum. You know, then the create creativity starts to flow. Um, you know, you don't have to give up everything to start a business. I think some of the statistically, some of the most successful businesses have been where people have continued in their in their job. So they've got that security and that income and they've started a business on the side. Yeah. You know? that's easy to do these days with technology and then you know you can then obviously as that grows and if it builds the way it wants then you can step straight into it when you're ready right but, um, not a, it's actually not as daunting a task I don't think as as people think it is right uh, so one thing around business but yeah I think everything else it's just as we spoke about today unfortunately life does depend on us yeah. and so it, we're the only ones that can make the choice what we want our our lives to look like right it's, the key i love it i love it and tell everybody your website where they can get in contact with you and if they want to go to your website to see all the different things you have to offer yeah sure so it's marniebeauchamp.com so it's just my name and oh okay yeah all right 
This has been amazing. And I'm definitely, I'm looking forward to reading your book. I can't wait to get it. I, you know, I, <laughs> you know, I can relate to you in lots of different levels. So it's, I'm, I'm looking forward to reading your book. I, you know, a lot of the things that you talked about, I I've gone through in my own life at different periods. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I find a lot of the things you said I could relate to, or even, you know, things that I would like to try, you know, cause I think, you know, we learn from each other, you know, and our, like Absolutely. our energies you know, definitely rub off each other. And, and there's always, there's always room to learn more. And that's how we grow is by opening our minds and opening ourselves to good people and, and learning from each other. So this has been yeah. a very, very special experience. And I thank you so much for coming on the show to share in your own personal story, because sometimes it's not easy for everybody to tell their story. And you, know, you came, you shared your story with everybody. And I can definitely tell you that the listeners appreciate it. And, you know, there are people out there that can relate and, you know, you've helped them. So it's a it's a wonderful accomplishment. And I think the advice you shared as well was phenomenal. So thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been a, a wonderful experience. And I hope, you know, maybe you can come back in the future. Such a pleasure. I would love to. Yeah. Thank you, Stacey. Oh, you're yeah, very welcome. It. You're very welcome. You have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.